All right, guys, if you remember when September started, I couldn't believe that we were finally in the NFL season. But we're deep into it now. It's been going, and it's been up, it's been down. But as always, football's been fun. And with the DraftKings Sportsbook, you never have to miss out on any of the action. So you can bet on all of your favorite teams and cash in every single week. So you're always in the game. All you got to do is bet $5 or more and get $150 in bonus bets instantly at the DraftKings Sportsbook. By making any pregame wager of $5 or more to get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Get in on the action at the DraftKings Sportsbook right now. Download the app. Use the promo code DCTV. Bet $5 or more and get $150 in bonus bets instantly at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Is an official sports betting partner of the NFL. And I'm so happy to be partnering up with him. And the crown is yours right now. Let's go. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Cormier's Corner. I'm Daniel Cormier, joined by my boys from my block. What's up, fellas? What's up, boy? What's up, boy? What's up? Good, man. It's the holiday season. Yo, how was the holidays? It was straight, bro. I made my first turkey. So oh, it came out pretty think, good. A little spicy. That thing, must, that thing must have been bland, man. Oh, no. That thing was spicy. <laughs> <was bland. laughs> He only seasoned with, season with red pepper. He only seasoned with red pepper. That ball don't use nothing but red pepper, man. Hey. No, he used like agave and stuff. Now, though, oh, know. yeah, he no, tripping. No. He got all kind of Mexican agave, peppers. Bro. He got a whole bunch of different different peppers now. You know, he had breached the Poblano peppers, bro. Poblano peppers. Poblano, <laughs> Poblano. Guys, um, after last week, Lace had a few cocktails. So we did rename the show Lace Ruffin. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> that whiskey took over, bro. <laughs> just, hey, I was just waiting. I was like, "Hey, hey, Wait, can I, I go?" <laughs> you start raising your hand in class to get a word in edgewise with lace. All right, fellas. So, a lot has been going on in the world of mixed martial arts. Obviously, last week the PFL bought Bellator. Bellator held its last. Event last weekend. They've got some great champions in Bellator right now. They're all going to go over to the PFL now. Unfortunately, a couple of the better champions in Bellator don't have weight classes in the PFL. So I'm interested to see how they work around that. I'm hearing that all Bellator fights will be taking place now overseas. So Bellator will not be a North American promotion anymore. But obviously, we'll get into that down the line when things start to happen. What was biggest to me, Don Davis is the owner of the PFL, and he was on Ariel Hawani's show the other day. And one of the biggest topics of conversation constantly is Nate Diaz, who still is at UFC events, still gets treated like a UFC guy. They really do love Nate Diaz for all that he's done over the course of his career. Well, Don Davis on Ariel's show said one thing. He goes, one thing about Nate Diaz or fighters are entrepreneurs. They're their own men. They do what they want to do. Nate will do it when he wants to do it. He's talking about fighting Jake Paul in MMA. So I'm just going to create a canvas that we're open for business. It's like the old Motel 6. We'll leave the light on on you. Light on for you. I just want to leave the light on. And I want to say, Nate, here's $15 million. Here's Jake Paul. We have all the infrastructure at the PFL. We're easy to work with. Dink the lights on. So essentially, he's saying to Nate, 15 million, fight Jake Paul in MMA fight. Nate replies, as only Nate can reply, I'm good. I'd rather fight real fighters and never go backtrack to the minor leagues, pussy FL. Fight yourself, dipshit. Here's Nate Diaz, bro. But only Nate Diaz could respond in this way. So when you hear that there's a $15 million offer on the table for Nate Diaz, because the way Nate re responded sounds like it's real, what does it make you feel? Because before it kind of feels like, oh, this guy's just talking. It sounds now with Nate responding the way that he did, this is a real offer. So like, 
What do you think when you hear 15 million for Nate to fight Jake Paul in an MMA fight? Start with you, Jamel. Hey, I just, I, I don't know. I really don't know because this guy was talking about Dana Worry now and all this. If Dana Worry, why are you begging? Why are you begging Nate Diaz to come fight <laughs> over here, bro? If you need Nate Diaz, why would why would uh, Dana uh, White be worried? You remember that movie, Dunk Minutes to Society, when he's like, I got these oh, cheeseburgers. You're right? Like, you just beg it, bro. That's what it's coming <laughs> off as, dog. Like, I got these cheeseburgers. I'll do anything, Nate Diaz. Just please just come help me out. That's what's coming million, off as. Though? But but that's what it's coming off as. If you're gonna offer 15 million, you can't one you can't one week say Dana White is not worried. He don't mention anybody unless he's worried. He mentioned us. But then you're going after Nate Diaz, like, please come help us. But that's, that's what the 15 million is showing is like, please, I'm gonna give you anything just to help us. Correct. Well, I think um the fact that he's wanting Nate Diaz to fight in the PFL, it's more about his um, the prospect of a fight between him and Jake Paul. I think, uh, yes. you know, it did It did numbers. It did good numbers. A lot of eyes. Social media actually took over that fight, you know? And the fact that they fought in boxing and for the last 10 years, all Nate's been talking about is how he's the best boxer in MMA. And then he goes and loses to a, a guy who, you know, just started taking boxing pretty seriously. I think if he goes and fights in the PFL... <laughs> And loses, he does exactly what Jamel's um, fishing for who, uh, who, Don to get. Who loses? If now listen, I'm not saying. Look, I'm not <laughs> saying he loses, but I'm saying if he goes and he fights in the PFL and he loses in the PFL, not to Jake Paul. I'm not oh. saying just Jake Paul. Oh, oh we're Nate talking has, about Jake Paul. So I was thinking, I was like, well, Wait yeah, a but the the. The fifteen million is just to get him to come and fight, bro. He's not making that money. He didn't make that money in the UFC, so he goes and gets fifteen million in the PFL. Then he fights again. If he loses in the PFL, everything that he says in that last tweet, the pussy FL and the minor leagues and stuff like that, legitimizes the PFL, you know. And then it it, it casts a, a dark cloud over Nate Diaz because he's been saying that they're second rate the whole time. That's why I think he's trying to give him this $15 million. Come legitimize our PFL. So you your think nation. he's trying to goad him into fighting into the organization with the idea that he's going to lose. I got a point to that, but let me let Terry get his first uh, first thought in before. Go ahead, Terry. You sure? Can I talk? Yeah. Is it all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, David bro, Ruffin like, got, hey, David yeah, Ruffin yeah, came yeah. back to the tip. <laughs> I don't want to be handcuffed, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, like... I, I don't see why he wouldn't do it. Like, if they're offered him $15 million, to me, like, it is a legacy fight, like Craig is saying. They want the name. And if he already fought, like, he fought boxing already, so what's the point of him not going to do it? He already damaged his legacy by losing to Jake Paul. <clears throat> Sorry. So why why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm crying, crying, bro. Man. I, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm oh, like, he already oh, damaged his legacy by by losing to Jake Paul in boxing. So that's part of his stand. He was, he was a good stand up, good boxer. So why wouldn't he go to PFL to box, to uh to fight for fifty million dollars? So for me, it's this, right? And this is where I kind of like it. It, it kind of to me, I do mm -hmm. believe that there is a ton of value in Nate Diaz going to the PFL. He's still one of the biggest names in fighting, but but first things first. I don't know if there's another place where he's getting 15 million to fight. I don't think he gets that in the UFC. I know for a fact that if he was getting that, he's fighting Conor McGregor and Conor McGregor only because their fights do so well. And it would be a third fight between those two. I also don't know. I, I know for a fact that he would not get 15 million to fight an amateur because essentially if he goes to the PFL, he's fighting the amateur Jake Paul. Just like Jake Paul fought an amateur boxer in Nate Diaz as the floor with Connor, as the Tyson Fury with Francis Ngannou. These guys are amateur boxers. It would be the first time a guy that is known as a boxer goes and fights mixed martial arts. I have no doubt in my mind that Nate Diaz would submit Logan, uh, Dylan, uh, what's his name? Jake, Jake. Paul. Yeah. I have no, uh, I have no doubt in my mind Nate would beat and submit Jake Paul. 
but I don't know that it really does much for him outside of getting him all this money. I don't know why he would want to go fight there outside of just taking the cash. But his response tells me is that he still has his eyes on one, possibly going back to the UFC or something better. If they, if they are offering him $15 million, he must feel like there's 20 out there, right? Because you know the money that they have with the Saudis now buying into the PFL. So he must think that there's more money out there for him. That's the only reason he wouldn't be taking this fight or jumping at this fight right now. Or he made a ton of money in that boxing fight. So he may not just need money. He might be like, you know what? Nate's not a guy that's going to do whatever anybody else tells him. So he's probably like, I got enough money now. I don't need to listen to these people. But outside of the money, there really is no reason for him to go to the PFL. But boy, does it not tell you how deep the pockets that these people have to be offering that type of money to Nate? Could you imagine what Francis is making right now? If Nate's getting offered $15 million? It's crazy. It's an, and Craig, another an, thing. Another thing, Craig. You said if he loses in the PFL. Derek Brunson, you guys all know Derek Brunson, DB. We yeah. all cool. We all know DB. Derek Brunson was still in the top 12 in the UFC, but Derek Brunson was not winning anymore. He fought that guy, Ray Cooper, last weekend and made it look easy. Smoke and Ray Cooper has been in the finals of that tournament two times. Derek made it look easy, Craig. So don't trick yourself into believing that the levels are the same because they are much different. I'm not trying to. What I really, honestly, and my thing is this. I think the biggest, and I might sound like a a, a homer or whatever, what, however this is going to come off, but I think the biggest fight in MMA, not the best fight, but the biggest fight in MMA is still Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz. Three. Yeah, for the third fight. That's the I, biggest I fight. I agree. It's the biggest fight that anybody, any promotion can put on. Everybody's still going to watch it because those two, they just clash like two goats. But the thing is, if he goes to the PFL and he doesn't look good, not just loses, if he if he just looks like I just rolled out of my couch just to go make this $15 million, I think that damages a, p a potential fight with Conor McGregor. That, a I mean, third fight. And no, a, tell me when's the Edwards last time he looked Look good, dog. Like that's Edwards. what I'm about to say, that's, Jamel. That's like the key. Nate, yeah, Nate go, Diaz actually fought fighting. Leon he Edwards. He fought Leon Edwards for 24 minutes, got beat, landed one punch, pointed at him, and he was like, he won the fight. It's like <laughs> he hasn't really looked like that same guy. Even the Tony Ferguson fight, like him and Tony Ferguson had a pretty decent fight up until he submitted him late in the fight. So it's like. I don't know, Craig. I, all he needs I, I really is, just all he don't needs agree is one moment, this. right? And his boy, the Nate Diaz Navy, was they just boy at him like, "Hey, he, I got it." He, he won. He won. He would have won. I really won. don't. If I really don't know. Rounds, he would have won. I really don't know how much he would help the PFL. Like nobody's expecting Nate Diaz to just go win fights no more, dog. For sure, it's just I Nate Diaz it. being in fights is a cool thing to watch, but nobody's Perfect. expecting Nate Diaz to go win fights. If he's in the PFL, they do. <laughs> if he's in the PFL, they do. Right, and I'm, that's not that's no knock on the guys that are fighting in the PFL. But right. I'm telling you, there's this idea that if you leave the UFC and you go there, you should find success. That's yes. what that's, Shane Bur Shane Burgos thought that too, and he hasn't been Shane doing Burgos that. Shane Burgos lost, there. but dude, so Terry, he was a big signing for them. But Terry, for Shane Burgos, there are ten other ones that went and did really well. It was oh. like when those guys all left the UFC and went to Bellator initially. Corey Anderson became the champ. Yeah. Ryan Bader became the champ. All those guys that left the UFC became champion. Now the Bellator guys are just unbelievable, these champions. But it's like they would expect him to be successful. I mean, Aspen Ladd left the UFC, and she was running the mill. She just fought against Kayla Harrison in one of the biggest women's fights they've yeah, put sure. on. Go ahead, Jamel. Nothing, man. Nothing. No, see what you was gonna say, man. I'm gonna just wait. I'm gonna just wait to see it, dog. I'm gonna just wait to see it. But I, I don't think like Ryan Bader was still a contender when he left the UFC. And so was Corey Anderson. And but it's so Nate Diaz. Was, and so was uh Derek Brunson. He's still Diaz. in the top ten or twelve. They were but all is the Nate same. Diaz. <laughs> Nate Diaz is still one of the biggest names in it's, all the fights. I'm not Diaz. asking. I know he's one of the biggest names. 
Mm. But if we gonna compare it to some other people that became champ that was kind of contenders in the UFC still, let's compare it. Is he or is he leaving us? Nah, look, hey, look, hey, look who they're hey, hey, promoting. Oh, oh, fight, answer, though, like. answer or take a shot. <laughs> I just he's not a contender, I, bro. Like they're trying to get him to fight Jake Paul, man. Like so, <laughs> obviously they're not looking at him to be a champion in the PFL. Well, to be a champion in the PFL, you got to go through the tournament. You got to go through the tournament. Yeah, it's like gonna... you can't. Anthony Pettis couldn't go through the tournament. Nope. But I bet on and I bet on a one night thing. Anthony Pettis could do really well. I think that is what's going to probably happen more for the PFL. Uh, now that they've had absolved Bellator, uh, absorbed Bellator, and having all these high level fighters, they got a champion versus champion card. That's gonna happen next year. That should be mm. really, really good, and I expect them to continue to put on uh, big fights. I actually that's like Nate Diaz. Landscape too. was that? I actually like Nate Diaz, but I just don't know what he's gonna do for PFL. Besides, gonna make fifteen million dollars. I just and, don't know. and his name, Jamel. He's got a big. He's got like a yeah, really, really big name. And like Craig said, social media went crazy when he boxed. So imagine what he would get. If he's fighting MMA against Jake Paul, it would be like Jake Paul's making his MMA debut and he's fighting. It would, it would be crazy. And it would be one of the. There's not a guy they could put across from Jake Paul in MMA that could do as well as Nate Diaz because any other fighter won't sell as many pay per views. I agree. As Diaz would. All right. So Sean O'Malley became the UFC 135 pound champ by beating Al Jermaine Sterling. All before that fight, Aljo was on that long win streak. He was talking about going to 145. Sean O'Malley was on the show last weekend, and he spoke about Al Jermaine. And he was really nice about it, very respectful. Said, I never said much about him in regards to negative. I was always kind of positive. But he did say this. He said, Aljo will probably go back to 135 because he's insecure and he wants to be stronger and bigger than these guys. Why else would he not fight 145? It's not like his skills aren't there. His skills, he's good. He's just not as good as me, but he's good. You know what I mean? He could go up to 45. I think he would do fine up there. And he pointed to some of the fights. He pointed to some of the exciting matchups, like watching Aljo fight Brian Ortega, so on and so forth. So is there any truth to that? Is Aljamain Sterling not going up to 145? Because he loses that uh, size advantage, Terry. We have seen him use that on a number of occasions to dominate guys. But for me, I don't think it's that. I think it's because he lost. And he, if you can make the weight, you go and fight the weight. But is Sean O'Malley on to something here? I don't think he ever had a problem making the weight. Like he did, he did dominate smaller guys with his style, like with his style, his pressure style, with his wrestling. What he called himself, the human backpack. Yeah. So for him to just be bigger and stronger, that's a big thing, man. But I'm looking at the 145 pound division, and there's not many people he's gonna be able to overpower. And he was saying that he got offered Kelvin Cater. That's a good matchup, but Cater's just seems so much bigger. He's than him, so bro. much bigger than him. So much bigger. And I'm like, so I'm like, who could he fight? Like, you go down, he's he's not gonna be able to fight Max. Toporia looks to be a problem. Obviously, Volk is a problem. Like, who can he use that size advantage on? And he's not going to have it because I guess from what he was saying, that he was going to be an average 145 pounder. So he's not going to be that much bigger than anybody. So he'd have to fight like a maybe a Dan Ige or something just to test himself at that. But Ige is just like short. I Ige yeah, yeah, is just thick. smaller. He's very thick. Yeah. But he's just shorter. Right. So I don't know. Like, that's just that's a dangerous division. Like, obviously, he's a former champion, so the skills are there, man. But it's just like his style. I don't know if he can implement that at 145. And you know what the problem is with that? You know what the problem is with that, Craig? Because of what Terry just said, he's a former champion. Former champions don't get layup fights. So all those guys that he spoke about that might be very difficult matchups, those are the guys he's fighting right away. How about the the fact that Sean O'Malley is his Mick Maynard, though? You know, like <laughs> O'Malley's like <laughs> O'Malley's out there telling him who he who he gonna fight next or who he should fight next and stuff <laughs> like that. I think it's interesting. You know, um, the thing is at thirty five, 
He lost to O'Malley. It doesn't seem like that fight's coming back. I think Marab has a better chance of, of fighting O'Malley before he does. So moving on, go to 145. But the thing that strikes me the most about it is I saw in red psychologically like two or three different times in his last interview. And that's not cool to me because if he's thinking mentally going to 145, I think he's not really checking into that division with the confidence that he needs to be the world champion that he is. So I don't like it. I think he needs to be fighting 145 because 35 is gone. Who else is there for him to fight other than O'Malley? But how much, how much, Jamel, has that taken away the confidence of Al Jermaine to want to go up to 145 considering he did get beat in the last fight and he got knocked out? So the prospects of going to fight the bigger dude after getting knocked out would not seem that interesting to me if I was just coming off of a knockout loss. I think I think um, Sean O'Malley is kind of on to something because if you if you remember after the fight when Aljo said like I got to reconsider if he can catch me with that I can only imagine what the guys at one forty five would do. So if you add that to the fact that he's uh, now he's saying man I was always bigger than everybody else and stronger and then you know now he's kind of like going back and forth on the decision. I just really think he may be a little bit worried about it or a little insecure. So I think I think Sean O'Malley's kind of on to something, but I don't want to call it that, man. I don't want to say a man is insecure, but just, just the way he's talking, I, I kind of believe that he's a little bit worried about those matchups at 145 because it would be a lot harder for him to go be champ at 145 than to probably wait for his next shot at 135. Because he's going to beat most of those guys at 135 again, unless Marab gets the title and then he's just waiting. They won't it. fight each other. They won't fight here's each the, other. But here's the question, though. Like, why did Aljamain Sterling not get a rematch when so <laughs> many have gotten rematches? Why was it not why? even considered? It's just like the the the, the Nate Diaz effect, the name. He has it. Sean, the, the O'Malley hype machine, bro. Like, that's, that's it. Sean O'Malley said Ah uh, nah, next. Yeah. They next need to go, man. Yeah. It ain't. Daniel. It ain't. It ain't. Daniel. Don't matter how many times making, you. Don't matter making, how many times you defend it. If your name is not shown O'Malley, you don't make no. Yeah, decisions. you're not. <laughs> they got to do O'Malley Vera, bro. That was the <laughs> only fight no to decision. be made. Nah, Sean O'Malley just kind of going through. Nah. No. 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 Nah, no, 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 Bro, but you don't beat him already. Why would he pick the guy that beat him? <laughs> that one. He got to get that one. back. That's the only stain know, on his record, bro. Like, I got to Well, hope. he said he undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. He believes it, too. <laughs> yeah, but that ain't true. Yeah, that ain't true. Like, he that's believes it's undefeated, bro. You can say whatever you want to say. That ain't <laughs> you true. can believe what you want, bro. That's no means real. <laughs> Hey, Cheeto had a beater under that hoodie he was wearing when they was facing off too. He knew better. I think he showed him like he let him he let him see it. Hey, I got a beater on, boy. You know that. <laughs> he had a beater. He a real one if he wear the white beater. Oh, yeah, if you wear a beater, dog. So. <laughs> That'd be interesting to see what happens with Al Jermaine Sterling because I'm interested to see what he decides to do. I think that he's valuable in either weight class. I don't know if his style is as effective at 145. He's long, he's tall, he's big. But even though he might weigh 170 now, I believe he's only 170 when he's just like severely out of shape. So I can only imagine when he starts to train that the weight comes down pretty quickly. And then he's right back in line with the rest of the guys that are fighting at 135. I prefer that he stays at 135. Because I believe that in time, he will find his way back to a championship opportunity. He just might have to fight one of his buddies in order to get that belt back. But but again, that lends itself to, hey, what are you willing to do to be the champ? That might be a question Aljo has to answer uh, very soon. Last one, boys. Alex Pereira, the guy that y'all all love. They called him Thanos and everything. Like, this dude done... Messed up the timeline, collecting Infinity Stones. He really is Thanos, bro. He was talking the other day about Jamal Hill. Jamal said that he's going to knock him out. To that, Alex said this. Everybody saw that he was saying he will knock me out and he won't wrestle me. 
He will stay in the striking and he will knock me out. Sure. Obviously, every guy who could be the next challenger for the champ will start talking. But I believe that he's a little bit overconfident. I never said I will knock someone out or whatever because you're in a fight camp. You prepare yourself. You have to focus on the fight. And I always say I will give you guys a good fight and a good showing. But predicting what happens is a little bit difficult. And I think he's a little bit overconfident with everything that he's saying. He also went on to touch on Israel Adesanya. He said, I will respect Adesanya's opinion. It doesn't matter if he's afraid or not, or not ready or whatever, or he just wants to stay a little bit out. If he doesn't want to fight me now, that's okay. I respect that. That's totally fine. First, on Jamal Hill. One, do y'all believe Jamal Hill is just going to stand in front of this dude and try to knock him out? No. You better go to Dagestan and learn how to wrestle, bro, because that's not a smart idea, bro. Like, I th- like anybody 205 to 265, bro, like heavyweight, they're gonna, they can, they can finish the fight. But is that smart, man? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think anyone should stand in front of this dude. And to Why say is that, this guy like, so dangerous, Terry? It's just that, I don't know, bro, like his left hook, like that power is just different, bro. That dude just must be dense. And like you say, you he kick you with like a little small leg kick, bro, and that stuff hurt. So this dude's bones just must be different, bro. Like does that Amazonian strength. He's from bro, the Amazon. Bro. He's from the yeah, Amazon. Yeah, man. It's different. What is, it, what, what is it with fighters, man? Is it an ego thing or what? Like, Because a lot of fighters will go in there and be like, I can, I can stand with this guy. I can box with this guy when they have an easier path to win. Or to compete, I just think Jamal Hill is not going. There's no way, <laughs> dog. Like, it's no. And T, I don't think it's just the left hook. I think it's all of it. <laughs> I'm watching this dude, bro. I'm watching this dude, and I see Yuri doing all kind of stuff before the fight. And this dude just got the stone face on, and I'm like, he's a savage, bro. Hey, that's one dude I don't want. I don't even. <laughs> I don't even want to face off with him. I don't even want to take. If I'm a fan, dog, I don't even want to go ask him for a picture and do a face off. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not doing it, bro. But I, I think Jamal Hill, he better wrestle. And I and like Jamal can, Hill too. Right? I've, I've met him and everything, but it's not smart. Why would you do that if you see the outcome? You know, with some strikers that is better strikers than you are. Why would you try that? But oh, I got a question for you. While we at we doing? Because you you had an opportunity to 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 wrestle with people, but you was like, you know what? I'm gonna stand and bang. Like, what makes fighters want to do that? I only did that. I didn't really want to do that. It's like when you couldn't take them down or when you start getting tired, man. You get yeah. tired up in there, so you end up standing the trade. Look, I would have wrestled Gustafson more, but then he cut me. And so now you're just in like, it's something in you that kind of clicks and you can't come back out of it. It's a, it's a weird, weird deal because between every round, Bob would ask me like, wrestle, you got to wrestle. They kept telling me, wrestle, 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 but it's like something that is in the fighter that once you cross over to a point, there really is no bringing you back, especially if you're finding success. When you need me, I, I kind of wish I was wrestling more. But, uh, but yeah, it's like something changes in you, man, and you just kind of start fighting, and you're really just fighting. You're really yeah, just that- fighting, and I think that's – but to do it but to do it before yeah, is different thing. to me. My yeah. intention was to go wrestle him more, but something changed in the fight. Craig, you think that Jamal Hill can knock him out? Listen, I'm. I, there's a difference. There's a difference. Look, Alex said something about um, you know people go into fights and they say they're gonna do this and that, and I don't do that. Why? Because he's a mixed martial artist. You know, they have that that aura and that respect in the fight game. Or, Jamal Hill is not a mixed martial artist. He's a fighter. So he's saying, I'm going to go stand up and knock him out and all that stuff because he's a fighter. And I don't have to respect everything that you're good at. And for me, I look at his last couple of fights, and they're all fighting the nights or performance of the nights. He's fighting mm-hmm. against all Johnny Walker. He's fighting against his um, mentor to win the belt. He's not wrestling them cats and, you know, and he can wrestle, but he's fighting. He's just wanting to knock people out. He wants to put on the show with with the Dana White contender series like he was just trying to build up an audience. That's what he wants to do. 
And I think he looks at Alex like a big, huge mountain and no one expects him to be his best self against Alex doing what he likes to do, which is swing them things and knock people out. So he's going to go out there and try to go out on his shield like the Warriors. He had he's built like that. That's what he wants. And if he loses, he can go back to himself and say, I lost like this. That's what I personally think. And I don't think that Alex is going to beat him. I think Jamal Hill is going to knock Alex out. Like a man, he, you know, a lot of dudes just always say that. Like a man, like, like, like a man, <laughs> they get knocked out on the street like, like a man. No, I, I got knocked like out like a man. man. <laughs> hey, Mo, Mo, I think you better oh, get no, some and you and you you didn't pay up. You forgot? No, I didn't forget. <laughs> hey, so that one Scott shot that I took don't count? If you ain't got no picture, it don't count. <laughs> oh my! <God. laughs> hey, you put hey. you put money on Jamal Hill. Mo? Me? He yeah. bet against Alex last fight, it would happen. <laughs> His track record, not the best. <laughs> got Craig just be jinxing people. Craig be jinxing people, man. <laughs> Craig like Drake, Drake. I'm Drake. Listen, listen. <laughs> Jamal Hill is freakishly long. He's much longer than you think, like in terms of his arms, his body, his size. He punches from odd angles. So some of those things can cause real issues for his opponents. I don't know if that would be the approach I would take. And when I see Jamal next, I'll tell him there's probably a little bit of a better way to approach fighting this guy, especially, or, or hey, maybe he's just playing the game. Telling him he's going to stand with him, he's just going to go take him down. You never really know. But what I do know is that when these two dudes get locked in the octagon, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be fun. Part. I cannot wait. Guys, next week, we got to talk Kobe Covington versus Leon Edwards. Why does he call him Leon Scott? I don't understand why he does that. I need to do some research into why he calls Rocky Leon Scott. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Leon Edwards not one to play with, man. If you ever watch the show Top Boy, Leon Edwards got some dudes that he run with, bro. Them dudes don't play over there in, in, in London, Birmingham, or wherever he's from. Guys. Every week, I love doing the show. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all's opinions. Nate Diaz, take the 15 mil, bro. Go get paid to fight an amateur. Take it. Al Jermaine Sterling, fight 135. That's my thought. And Jamal Hill, take this dude down. <laughs> Don't let your pride lead the way on you, man. Especially when Alex be doing all kind of crazy shit in his takedown defense. Alex be doing some weird stuff trying to defend takedown so it possibly can work. Guys, I'm DC. That's Craig, Terry, and Jamel. We appreciate you guys watching. The first show was our biggest one. A couple went down. Last show, second biggest one. We appreciate y'all coming back around. Till next time, peace.